Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome. Um, if you're joining me by newsletter or maybe by YouTube or social media, have your watching day, just like to welcome you. And I just got in from church. It was the Sabbath today. Uh, I had a great Saturday at church. Uh, and our pastor, though, took a moment today uh, to have a moment of silence for the victims uh, that had lost their lives in the tragic shooting uh, that just took place down in Florida. And it made me think that something is ultimately going on here. Here we are just the second month into February and there's been 18 shootings already across the nation. Sad, sad events. Children have lost their lives and whether you're a supporter of gun control or you're not, I'm not here to debate that or talk about it one side or the other. My personal opinion being on the other side of the law that you can take away the guns, but the criminal is always going to be able to get them. So there seems to be something else going on here. And I do believe that we definitely have to crack down. We have to have uh, 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 some safer controls to protect our children. And, and people are on both sides, whether of, of the political stream, Democratic, Republican, they're all calling for something to get, get something done in our country. We just can't continue to put our children at risk. Um, but I'd like to show you a clip here uh, real quickly about what happened here in Florida. And I want to discuss it because I believe that there is an answer, an answer that man uh, by himself can't answer. So let me just go ahead and share my screen. And I want to pull this up for you. And if the young man's name, he was 19. Uh, Nicole uh, Nicholas Cruz, uh, which was 19 years old, opened and fired on defenseless students and staff uh, at the Stoneman Douglas High School. Now, look at the headlines here. Cruz says demon voices told him to slaughter 17 as cops revealed they were called to his home 39 times. Demon voices. I'm going to play a video clip here. It's pretty short, and, and I want to talk about it a minute. This is very, very tragic, very tragic. And it seems like, you know, 2018, we started a new year. We just went through this. It's really something that's been plaguing our country since Colbyn. If you remember, it started, and, and it was like it would, it, we had never had anything like that when it happened at Colbyn. And then years went through and we had more shootings. And before you know it, shootings that took place every few years were happening every year to every six months. Now it seems like every couple weeks or less, there's a mass shooting someplace, whether it's at a mall, whether it's at a church, whether it's at a school. This continues to happen all across our country. And not just here, it happens even in other places around the world. But let's go ahead and watch a quick video clip. The latest footage of the app shows the suspect being taken uh, to prison. This is 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz, who has now been charged with 17 counts of premeditated murder after being questioned for hours by state and federal authorities. Uh, more information is coming out about him. He was apparently a troubled teenager who posted some quite disturbing material on social media uh, before the shooting spree, according to the police. He'd been expelled from Marjorie Stone and Douglas High School for disciplinary reasons. Um, let's just have a, a listen to his lawyer. No way to explain motive. No way to explain why he went to the school. Um, to, he never talked about anything, about having any hard feelings about anything at the school. Um, young man's been described as a little awkward, a little quirky, but nothing uh, to explain this. Nothing to explain this. At least by man's standards, they can't explain it. But by his own voice, his own omissions, he said he heard these demonic voices. The Bible speaks of demonic possession. In fact, you can go all the way back to the garden when Eve said the serpent beguiled me. Beguiled actually means wholly seduced. And so she was influenced by Satan at the very beginning to do something that God had told her not to do which was partake of the fruit of the tree that was in the midst of the garden. For God said in the day that she would eat of that fruit, she would die. And of course, then she shared that with her husband and he did eat. He wanted to blame it when God called him out. What did he do? He put the blame on the woman. And the woman put the blame on the serpent that the God put in the garden. So there was no responsibility there. Everybody wanted to blame somebody else for the problem. 
And a lot of that's happening today. But we know the cause and the root of all evil. And it is Satan himself. For he's a liar and the murderer from the beginning. And the Bible warns us that these things are going to continue over and over and over again. And it's sad because as we look for solutions, whether it's gun control, whether it's better security like the airports have uh, uh, at, at the schools, and there definitely needs to be better security, psychological evaluations going on these people, you see that the basis of what a lot of these people, Sandy Hook, uh, many of these mass shootings and bombings, uh, people say they hear voices. People say they hear demonic possessions. Ephesians 6, 12 says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against uh, principalities and powers. So we're wrestling against principalities and powers in dark places. That's the enemy himself. For he's come to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus comes to give us life and life more abundantly. And so as we approach the soon return of Jesus Christ, Satan would like nothing more than to take our children, to take our lives and destroy our souls. And he's doing it through music. He's doing it through the media. He's doing it through video games. He's doing it through Hollywood. And I mean, I remember growing up, I'm 46 years old, and I remember when I was just a kid, um, the violence that is now commonplace was unheard of. Video games in the back then were Atari. They were a lot friendlier. Cartoons. You had Tom and Jerry and, and, and Felix the Cat. Now you just have, you have basically sex being put out in front of children. Violence, guns, drugs, women being demoralized. Uh, and it's just sickening to the point to where people have been desensitized to violence, desensitized to the issues and to the problems. And it's only going to get worse. In the book of Timothy, he speaks of men becoming lovers of self more than lovers of God, lovers of money, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. We see in the book of Luke, uh, chapter, uh, Luke chapter 21, uh, verse 28, he says, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken but hallelujah in the next verse we have then they will see the son of man coming in the cloud with power and great glory now when these things begin to happen look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draw if near yes we're going through hardships yes we're going through turmoil Yes, it seems like every single day there is something else, some tragedy that's happening uh, here and around the world. I mean, we just had a 7.2 magnitude earthquake in Mexico City. People lost their lives. Wells, whoever hears of earthquake in Wells, a 4.4 happened today. I believe there was a 5.9 that hit Guam. Dozens of earthquakes around the world. And still, people wonder what in the world is going on. Now, if you remember back in the book of Mark, uh, chapter five, uh, there was a man that was demon possessed and Jesus came to him and asked him who he was. And in that ninth verse of that fifth chapter, he says, and he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion for we are many. But praise God at the voice and at the command of Jesus, the demons were able to flee from that man. And in other places of the Bible, we see this over and over again, whether Jesus was calm in a storm or Jesus was casting demons out. He tells us that he is the answer to the problems that we seek. So it's not found in legislation of laws, and those things may very well be good and short-sightedness, handle some of those things. But the problem is, is that people do not have Jesus in their heart. And if you don't have Jesus in your heart, then you have the enemy. For there's either one or the other. It's either Jesus or it's Satan. It's either good or bad, black or white. It's no in between. You know, you can't love one or you'll hate the other. You can't serve two masters. You must decide today who you will serve. And we're going to go through things. It is only going to get worse as we get closer and closer to the return of Christ on that seventh trump. Now, 
it's wonderful news though going through all of this that scripture tells us over and over again for example in matthew 10 22 uh, and he shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. People are going to hate you because you talk about Jesus. People are going to hate you because you're Christian. We've seen that over the last several years with ISIS and and and, uh, and people being beheaded for their testimony in Jesus Christ. But the Bible tells us, "He that endures to the end shall be saved." Matthew twenty four thirteen. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You have Matthew twenty eight twenty teaching them to observe all things whichever I have commanded you, and lo, I will be with you always, even unto the end of the world. Matthew 13, or excuse me, Mark 13, 13 says the same thing, that he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. And you see this underlying theme over and over again of the Bible, not that God takes us out of these problems, but God takes us through these problems. Look at the nation of Israel. Uh, uh, as they were in captivity for 430 years and, and bondage by the Egyptians. And God sent the prophet Moses to them to deliver them out of bondage. He took them through the Red Sea. He took them through the plagues. He took them through the desert to get them to the promised land. We're going through our trials and tribulations right now. For people that are looking for a seven-year tribulational period and all these things of a rebuilt temple and waiting for a, a, a rapture to occur that's not written in the Word of God, I'm telling you that we're already in the time of the end. There are no more time prophecies to be fulfilled. We are waiting for the soon expected great hope of Jesus Christ. And let me give you some of that because I do believe in the return of Jesus Christ. I do believe in this, uh, that he will descend and everybody will see him in the clouds. Not a few people, not a private group, nothing secret, but the entire world will know that it is Jesus. And in the book of Titus uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 13, it tells us that we are looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is our hope. So even though we're going through this hardship, this turmoil, and every single day it seems like things are getting worse and not getting better, and Scripture tells us that's going to happen. But know that it means that Jesus is just a little bit closer because this world is getting to a point to where Jesus is and always has been the only answer. He is the only one that can save us, the only one that can fix our problems, fix our situations. Uh, there's other places in Scripture that I'll take you with really quick that I think are, are really, really good. That We have this hope, we have this glorious appearance of Lord Jesus Christ. If you turn in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and if we look at uh, verse 50 through 54, scripture reads like this. Now, let me turn my light on just a little bit so I can see my Bible a little better. It's starting to get a little bit dark here as the Sabbath hours are starting to go down. Uh, scripture tells me here that, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Did you know the Bible actually calls death sleep? That's what it refers to death as, a state of sleep. And it says, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. And in the moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For the corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when the corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be written, death is swallowed up in victory. That is the glorious hope that we have, especially those who have died in Christ, that we will see them again at that last trumpet, when Jesus returns to take his church to heaven for 1,000 years. You want more proof? I'll give you more proof as well, because there's many places within God's Word that we can see uh, this happen. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 16. And this is all talking about the same event. It tells us here in Scripture, 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. This is those that have died. 
And it says, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. There's that blessed hope we read in Titus. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. That's at that last trumpet, 1 Corinthians 15, 54, that we just read about. Jesus is going to ascend in the clouds. Every eye will see him. Those that have died in Christ in the grave will be raised incorruptible, will be given this new spiritual body, will be taken to heaven for 1,000 years. We which are alive and remain will be caught up and changed and get that new glorious body and be taken to heaven also for 1,000 years. Let me give you another scripture here to back it up. I love multiple scriptures here to back up the Bible. John 5, 28 and 29, one of my favorite passages of scriptures. And it says in John 5, 28 and verse 29, do not marvel at this for the time is coming uh, in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and will come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. So there we see that when Jesus returns, we have this blessed hope that all those that have died in Christ and those that are alive and remain will be caught up into the resurrection of life. That's that glorious hope that we have. And those that did not die in Christ, those that have, uh, that, 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 went and died and went to sleep without Jesus in their heart and rejected him. And I'm not talking about those that have never been exposed to the teachings of Christ because God looks upon the heart for those that have never had the opportunity uh, to be witness to of the gospel. But we know before the coming of the end that this message will go to the entire world. That's what the proclamation of the three angels message in Revelations 14, six through 12 is all about. We have work to do as a church. As God's people, if you're a believer in Christ, we have a hope that the rest of the world doesn't have, and they need us to share that hope. People are dying, lives are being lost. Men's hearts are failing for what's coming upon the world. And my heart goes out to those in Florida, those families that have lost their children. But the answer is Jesus. When you've got a shooter that goes in there that's talking about he heard voices and he's demonically possessed, that they told him to go and do this. Believe me, it is real. The devil is real. The biggest lie he ever gave to anybody was trying to make them think that he was a fairy tale, that he didn't exist. Because the devil wants nothing more than to destroy you and kill you and take you straight to hell, which is where he's going when Jesus returns at the end of that thousand years. He's the first one, him and his angels, that are put into the lake of fire. You know, read Revelation chapter 20 to the end through 22. It will tell you all about the new heaven, the new earth, the first and second resurrection, the resurrection of the of the of the of the those that are found in Christ, and resurrection of the wicked at the end of the thousand years, and those that are judged. Now the world's spinning out of control, and it doesn't matter who we elect, uh, who we don't elect. The world is coming to a close. History is coming to a close. Jesus is coming soon. But the question I would ask you is, are you ready? Are you ready for the soon return of Jesus Christ? And if you're ready, is your family ready? Are your friends ready? Are you allowing God and the Holy Spirit to use you to witness the other people? See, we're all called to minister. The Great Commission in Matthew 28 tells us, to go and teach everyone, all nations of the world, anyone we come in contact with, where the Holy Spirit will open that door, to teach them all things that he has commanded us to observe, and to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what we're supposed to do as Christians, particularly in this generation right now, because we're running out of time. Time is short. For some people, you know, we always talk about the end of the world is soon. And you have your mockers and you have your scoffers that say, hey, where has it happened? Everybody's been predicting it for a long time. Well, we're just that much closer. 
But know for some people this week, some people even this morning, it was the end of the world for them. And we owe it to all those that are still alive to give an opportunity of salvation, an opportunity and share Jesus with them. We should all be in prayer for the family members down in Florida, for those that lost their lives, and that in a tragic event like this, that something good can come out of it. You say, Harold, how in the world can something good come out of this? Well, Romans 28 says all things. That doesn't mean some things, it means all things. Work for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. So I believe even in tragedies like this, the Holy Spirit will work. The Holy Spirit will not be stopped. God's Word will not return void. People will be saved through this tragedy. The question is, will you? If you'd like to know more, maybe you're seeking more truth. Maybe there's some things I said today that you're just not quite sure about. Well, you know, I challenge you uh, to get on my website, makinglifechanges.org. I'll put a link at the bottom of this. There's some great videos there. If you go to Spiritually, uh, you can see some great videos about end times prophecy, the mark of the beast, benchmarks of the beast. And there's some really good Bible studies I would recommend on two uh, different sites. One of them is amazingfacts.org, amazingfacts.org. Absolutely fantastic Bible studies. I teach amazing facts in prisons uh, uh, every single month to a lot of the men there, and it's been changing lives. Uh, I studied amazing facts myself, and it opened up a lot of uh, uh, issues that I had with regular religion because I studied many different faiths and there was always seemed to be holes or always seemed to be certain points of doctrine that didn't line up with something I found in the Bible. And then I got a hold of, uh, uh, well, excuse me, the Holy Spirit got a hold of me, uh, you know, because people say you found God, but, but you don't find God, God finds you. And it's up to you to receive or reject him because he's calling all of us. And so, the Lord found me, and I was at a point in my life where I was very, very uh, uh, hurt, humbled. I'd lost everything, lost my freedom, almost lost my life, lost many family members, and literally I was in a dark place. And I, I, I started studying the Word of God, chapter by chapter, line by line, just really eating up God's Word in its entirety, because that's what it's about, not listening to uh, per se, a, a, a pastor or a church or some religion or a televangelist without checking it out in this Bible. And if it lined up with this Bible, 100%, not 99%, because one thing you got to know is there is only one truth. Jesus said in John 8, 32, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. See, there's not multiple truths. There's only one. Ephesians 4, 4 says there's one truth, one church, one God, one baptism. So there's only one. Now, a lot of churches have bits and pieces of truth. But remember, Satan has bits and pieces of truth too. And we have to be careful. And it's our responsibility to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. It's our responsibility to take time to spend time with God and study His Word. Not to just listen, but we need to check things out and make sure what we're being taught is truth. And so I encourage you and challenge you to get back into the Bible. I encourage you and challenge you to spend more time in your prayer life. So your faith life and your prayer life should, should really be a reflection of each other. You know, how big is your faith? Well, how big is your prayer life? How big is your prayer life? How big is your faith? They go hand in hand. Right now, the people in Florida need us. They need us to pray. They need us to be witnesses. The nation needs us. The world needs us. And in a special sense, God's remnant, we've all been called to a very special service to help get this last great message out to the world, a message of hope, a message of finding out who the true God is and what his word teaches, not what man teaches or some religious uh, uh, organization that wants to control you or, or, or some of these media superstars out there that would put people uh, uh, in, in cults or followings and and have people spend their money and follow after them and, 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 and get to a point to where their very acts and their life are influenced by Satan himself. I can tell you that I've been very blessed uh, uh, just 
in the last uh, six, seven years, God has really just taken my life and changed me, molded me and shaped me. And, and, and we still go through trials and tribulations because you got to know there is no testimony without a test. But know that God is with you through the test, through the trial. You need to stay firm. You need to stay committed. You need to stay obedient to his commandments, not just one or not just nine or not just the ones that are convenient, but all of them. And so when I look at these tragic events that keep happening in our nation, the problem is people don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And because of that, they've allowed the enemy to come in and influence them, spiritually, demonically speaking, and control them. All the signs were there. Somebody should have reached out to to Cruz. So many attempts. I mean, it, it, it says here there was, what is it? called the police were called uh, 39 times to his house his lawyer you know called him a broken human being you know by his own admissions he said he was possessed i believe that and possession is real but know that jesus is the solution but we don't have to be fully possessed to go in and take people's lives with guns we can do it in our relationships we can allow satan to come in to to the things we put in our body with drinking and alcohol and cigarettes. We can allow Satan to come into us with the music that we listen to and the movies that we watch that are demoralizing women and children and promoting drugs and promoting gun violence and, 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 and shooting and war and killing and murder. Or listening to the music that promotes a culture that's all about what's in it for me. And wanting God to conform to my standards and accept me the way I am instead of me conforming and changing to what God is wanting to mold me into. I want to leave you with that. You know, I ask, uh, share this video on social media. We got to get the word out. You know, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. Jesus is the answer. He's the only one that can save us. And know that he is coming soon. Visit my YouTube channel as well, Making Life Changes. I'm on Facebook uh, as Harold Helm. You can search me there. Uh, just go to makinglifechanges.org. All my websites and all of my uh, ministries are on there as well. Uh, and I appreciate it. And uh, once you keep coming, I'll keep sending out newsletters as, uh, as I'm able to. And uh, God bless everyone in here.